Hello again, this is Jim from 100th Monkey Mushroom Farm. Today in this video I want to show you how to set up your shiitake kit. Um, I'm going to give you six steps to the, the really easy setup and I'm going to give you a bunch of tips on how to maximize uh, this growth and get the most out of this kit. Uh, the first step is to, when you open it up, is to look at uh, two things. The first being the date and you'll notice on the top there is written uh, shiitake 1231. So that's when this, this kit was started. Um, it helps to understand the life cycle of shiitake. Um, it's quite a long one as it comes to growing mushrooms and it takes um, in between a period of 40 to 60 days after they are created to start producing mushrooms. So the first thing you do by checking that date is count out and see if you are 40 days past the time that we started this kit. Um, we are actually, today is this 43rd day, and so it's a perfect time to start it. If you try to start it before then, it's, um, it most likely will not begin. It needs to go through that period of, of time to get biologically ready to produce. Now on the other hand, on the 60 day side of that, is um, you're pushing to the, to, the, um, to the end where it's going to produce whether you uh, like it or not. And that brings up the second thing that you're going to check for. Um, the second thing is you're going to look, before you open this bag, aside from looking at the date, is you're going to look in the, at the, side, the inside of this bag. Now everything that you see on here, this is the normal growth, all the browning, the yellow, uh, the little bit of liquid that you see in here. This is all part of its natural cycle. You also see uh, that there, there's raised bumps on there and that look, um, like popcorn and it's called in the uh, mushroom growing industry popcorning and that is what it is supposed to look like. Now if it's got gotten to the point where it's later in its cycle and you're for whatever reason moving into those later days um, it, it's like I said it's going to start producing inside of this bag. Now that's the second thing you're checking for. You check the date, see if it's past 40 days. But if you look inside this bag, and I'll overlay some photos so you can see what this looks like, that it's actually producing inside this bag, it'll uh, be little bumps with a brown uh, head on it and it'll start uh, pushing out. Those are the primordia, the beginning of the mushrooms. If you get your bag and it's in that state, it is, um, you'll skip to step number five, which is, I'll explain to you as we, as we go through here. Now what we try to do here, at the farm is we we want to send these two in the most vital state uh, possible and that is of course when it's younger so the reason for checking the date is that we may send it to you and you may get it at its uh, 30th day in that case you just sit and wait and don't do don't move on to step two until that 40th day and by sending it to you early that is is guaranteeing the vitality it's just going to be the kit's going to be much more vital to start it at that younger. Um, but again, um, being as you can't predict all of the, the variables in nature, if it starts to produce in the bag, we'll skip to step five. Or maybe you uh, received the kit but didn't open it for a while, or um, you know, whatever the reason is, if it starts producing, it's still fine, it's still gonna produce, we'll just we'll skip to the, uh, the next step. So step two in the process is simply to put the, the kit with the bag unopened into your refrigerator for three to five days. What that's doing is that is uh, it's simulating in nature a cold spell and that changes the chemistry inside the kit and basically is telling it it's time to start producing. We're getting into this these colder days. Step three in the process is what they call in the mushroom growing uh, industry thumping. And most of the things that we do to a kit to get it to produce are mimicking something in nature or exposing it to cold, uh, like we said with that, with that first step, putting in the refrigerator that mimics the cold spell, um, saturating with the water and so on. But thumping, no one's been able to figure out why this initiates um, growth in shiitake mushrooms, um, but for some reason it does. And the thumping is simply to um, take the kit and lift it about three to six inches, keep it level on the flat, and drop it. <laughs> and that little shock that ran through all of this mycelium in this kit is one of the factors that growers have found to make this grow rapidly. So step four is the cold soak. Um, when I soak this, I'm going to soak it for four hours, and I'm going to soak it in a bucket or a pan. In this case, I use a bucket. 
and when, when you soak it, you want to be sure to use non-chlorinated water. If you're using tap water, and um, there's two easy ways to get the uh, chlorine out, is to uh, let it sit for 24 hours, just open and the chlorine will dissipate. Or you could boil the water and make sure that it cools down to, um, to room temperature before you use it. This one I let sit out for 24 hours, and I let it sit out um, over night and it's still very cold we were into the 30s last night another thing you could do if it's not that cool is to um, put a, a tray of ice in there uh, shiitake likes that cold water soak and again this is going to be a four hour soak so to this point i in those first three steps i haven't opened the bag up yet so i'm going to open the bag and i'm going to remove this bag and you'll notice Inside there is um, some liquid again. There's the brown That's part of its natural cycle just carefully cut the bag off you want to Try not to disturb the mycelium as much as possible and when you take this off Also, you'll notice that on the top of this there's a bunch of mycelial growth that is very loose now you can take this off gently, but it's like um, um, It is mycelium, but if it's connected to deep tissue don't remove it, that's fine. But you want to remove just the loose, uh, it's like the loose the skin on top. So take that off, and there'll be some liquid in the bottom of this. That's fine. So do this over a kitchen sink somewhere where you can afford to be a little bit messy. And I'm going to set this inside the water, and it's, it's going to be very buoyant. So I'm going to need something heavy to weigh it down. So a simple way is to take a, um, uh, a plate, set it on top, and then like put a, um, something heavy on top like a brick and submerge it. What this is uh, mimicking obviously is the rain. We had that, that cold spell coming out of the refrigerator and this is super saturating it with water so that it can give us that nice big production. Um, once you've located it in your house in a spot that's not in direct sunlight, um, incandescent, fluorescent, those are all fine is, is um, it, they don't need much light, but they do need light to, um, to grow. So locate it somewhere, and also we suggest putting it somewhere where you pass by it frequently. Ideally, the, the, uh, the kitchen counter, uh, because you can then remember to uh, mist it, humidify it, but uh, more importantly, to, uh, to watch it, to watch it grow and be part of it and you know, learn you know, kind of its cycle and like, oh, I see one that's coming out here. It's just, it, that's a fun part of the process and to have it um, too far away, um, you know, it, it inhibits you from, from doing that. So I put, I picked out a good spot in my home with good light. I'm um, getting the temperature um, and the, um, the light of your house are great. The humidity is the factor that we really need to augment and, and we're going to do that with this step six. This is the humidity tent and the mister. Uh, but first, before I put my humidity tent on, uh, point out, remember to, there is um, if you see any water in there, just every day, you don't have to do this multiple times, but just make sure that the water that is um, in that plate doesn't sit there. Um, you want to keep that uh, water free, but you do want the, the, the fine mist on the outside. So inside your kit, included with your kit, is uh, what we call the humidity tent. And this is what's going to provide, help us provide the humidity. It is a bag that essentially forms a uh, terrarium. You see little holes for air exchange. We do need some air exchange, and it's this dance between air exchange and humidity and trying to balance them out for the best we can. So you're going to take this bag and open it up and roll it like you would um, a pant leg. You're going to fluff it out and set it over the top. So I now have my humidity tent set up, and what I'm, what I'm, what I'm going to do is, uh, probably two to four times a day, is I'm going to take the humidity tent off and I'm going to use the uh, in, in mister included, and again this is non-chlorinated water, the same way that we non-chlorinated for our soak, I'm going to spray it inside of this tent to, humid, or to uh, create condensation on the inside of this tent. And by convection, when I put this back over, that's going to create a high level of humidity in there. Now also, for shiitake, shiitake in the beginning of its growth cycle, until the mushrooms get to be about an inch uh, large, they li it likes to be sprayed directly on. So not only am I going to spray on the bag and load it with condensation, but I'm also going to spray on top of the block itself, just to keep it nice and moist. Now, 
So that was the setup portion. Now you're you're getting into the growing portion. Now this right here, this is um, fast forward um, three to ten days later, and you've you've been misting. And what you're going to start to see are the primordia, the ones that we talked about earlier that might already start forming in the bag, but this is ideally when we want them to form is outside. And you'll notice these little brown bumps right here. All of these are the ones that are going to turn into your shiitake mushrooms. So there are some on that side, uh, some are going to come off of this corner, and some down here. Now, the, uh, this neat little trick I want to uh, show you is that this um, type of shiitake for um, various reasons likes to um, produce mushrooms from the bottom and you can see most of these are down low very few if any are going to come off the top now a little trick is is that when they get about this size it's about a quarter to a half inch and you see those bumps turn it and it's been face down on its plate for those uh, this one for four days turn it and look at the bottom and you'll notice that on this side all of those little brown spots that you see in here there are those are the beginning that's the primordia of more shiitake so if we were to leave it face down like this they would grow out of the side but it would hamper their growth so this little tip for growing all of these is to just turn it upside down um, the vast majority of mushrooms in the world they grow against gravity so these are small enough they haven't started their direction and growth yet so I'm going to leave it upside down on this plate. And now, all of the ones that were on the perimeter, those big clusters, plus the you know, 15 to 20 that are on top, are now going to uh, produce. So that's just a much more efficient way to get a larger uh, crop of your shiitake. When is it time to harvest your shiitake mushrooms? Well, this is our kit from our setup, uh, shiitake setup video. And it is five days later, and here's what we have. Um, these, some of these are ready to be harvested and here's what you're looking for when harvesting shiitake is you're looking for just underneath the cap and you can see on this one right here there's a little skirt this last little eighth inch part right there that is a little skirt that drops down you can see it on this one also a little skirt now ideally you want to catch these when the skirt is still rolled under so you can see for example on this one right here the skirt hasn't dropped down you can see underneath still rolled underneath there that's the ideal time taste wise to harvest your shiitake now shiitakes grow in a in a wave and uh, this is a wave of mushrooms right here all of these individual mushrooms are going to be ready to eat within a one to three day window of each other and then that wave or flush of of shiitake production is over and then you take the steps for your, your second one um, but they, they, like other mushrooms, like the oyster, uh, which are the piapino, which grow in these in these group clusters, you have to take it all at once. But being as these are individual, you cut them off individually as they become ready. So, for example, this one that um, they just showed you, that large one that had the skirt already dropping down, I'm going to take a, a sharp knife and I'm going to cut it off at the base, as close as I can get to the block, and I'm going to let the other ones continue to grow until they're they're just about ready to let that, that skirt drop down. Now if they've gone past like this that's still fine. Um, they're good and they'll, they'll continue to go all the way until they flatten out. They're still fine to eat at that point. It's just if you want to get the optimal flavor out of them just before the skirt drops is the time to take them all off. We often hear that this produces so much uh, we hear from people that we can't eat them all at once. Uh, if that is the case uh, when you've taken them off Put them in a paper bag, store them in the refrigerator, they'll store fine there in a paper bag so that it can breathe uh, for a week to 10 days. There's still a lot, of, uh, a lot of energy left in this. And so to get the second flush, and you could try for a third and, and so on, uh, but, but to get the next ones, it's this, the, the same pattern of let this sit and dry out. It needs to go into this, this state of dormancy for, for 10 days. And so I've picked these 10 days ago and you can see this has gotten much browner and you can hear it's 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 uh, hardened and this is the way that shiitake pr protects itself is it forms this hard uh, dry covering on the outside although it still does have moisture in there now to get this to grow again we need to rehydrate this because a lot of water has been pulled out of that through the mushrooms that you just grew and for sitting for 10 days and so we're going to uh, reinitiate or re, uh, uh, 
with water. Uh, but, but first, because that is so hard, we're going to need to put a few holes in here. So take a, <clears throat> a sharp knife and uh, make sure it's clean and you're just going to poke some holes. I like to do for kind of aim it for the center. Uh, so I'm plunging, that's probably five inches. And I'm just going to poke some holes. Like again, like I said, the reason I'm doing this is because this outer shell is, is, is pretty tough and I need the water to get back inside of it. So I'm just going to place it back in my bucket, cold water again, non-chlorinated of course. I'm going to set it back in there. Of course, don't forget the brick. And soak it for four hours. After my four hours, I'm going to put it back right, right where it was. I'm going to put it back in that same spot, the well-traveled spot that um, I can watch and enjoy it. Um, and this one, the second flush, most likely is going to take a little longer than that first one did. And it's um, um, going to be probably, if you had a good first flush, it's probably going to be less, and, and as will the subsequent ones, because you are using the energy in there. Now, um, one of the things that we are really encouraging people who have our kits to do with all of our mushroom species is to expand that. And here's an example of what I mean by expanding that kit on. This is a oak log that we inoculated with a spent kit. And what we did is we grew the kit twice, as we just demonstrated. And then when we were done, we took the kit and broke it up into a bucket and inoculated this log. We took those that sawdust that's in there. Um, every, every grain of sawdust has that mycelium on it, and it's now you can use it to spawn something else. And uh, we created these logs. Um, uh, we started them eight months ago and they're already producing uh, some, some beautiful shiitake from that kit that we already grew and ate. And the interesting thing about these is these are, this is going to produce for, for multiple years. Um, so that's the exciting part about how to continue our, our kits. We have a fantastic video on, um, on our YouTube channel and link to our website uh, about log inoculation. That's one of the ways that, that, that you can do it. And shiitake prefers to be regenerated into a log. Um, so, so please check that out. Um, also, so, uh, you might want to bookmark this page in case you have any questions, you can quickly come back to it. Also, please subscribe to the channel, our YouTube channel, which is 100 Monkey Mushrooms. And um, so you can, you can uh, watch the latest. We have a lot of great information on there. Or check out our website and you know, see some of our, our kits and the activities that we have for kids. And um, there's a lot of um, interesting um, material on there uh, to learn about this fascinating world of fungi. So again, thank you so much. If you have any um, questions or leave a comment below or, or send us an email. And, and thank you. Hope you have fun with it.